mic check. All right, that works. And it's focused enough. Once you get some paint on it, it'll look a little better. So how's everyone doing tonight? Paula said you guys are getting wild talking about story time. I don't get it. I don't know. It was. It seemed like it was wild. Like, Paula has a different idea of what wild is than I do. That's for sure. <laughs> story time is not my idea of a wild night. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Baby's sleeping in the bed again. So I'll see you guys in about six hours. <laughs> gonna be fine uh-huh uh-huh me and me and uh peter were talking about that a little bit when we uh went on zoom earlier uh yeah yeah we were talking about how <clears throat> when gabe sleeps in his bed i'm up at four so we'll see how that goes but i don't know so uh we have a a new miniature coming hopefully pretty soon uh it's gonna be a gargantuan blue dragon uh my favorite uh, type of dragon, and uh, I'm I'm absolutely thrilled. But are we gonna make it blue? Yes, I'm painting it blue. I might even have to paint this one unless you're like adamant about it. But it is really awesome. This is it, Paula. Oh, that looks so it's cool. the horn. That's the distinct blue dragon horn, right? Gotcha. So it's. So rather than this, it's going to actually have the open mouth. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna, I like it. Uh, I have, they're setting me up uh, with that. But anyways, it'll be um, through Magecraft Miniatures. Uh, I'm going to share the link to them right now. They have some really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to getting this one painted. Um but yeah, so how how is everybody tonight? You guys doing well? What's going on with you guys? Oh, stutters. I don't like it when there's stutters. You all right over there, Paula? Yeah. How, I, how's your mini coming? It's going great. <laughs> is it is it all primed? Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure because you were talking last time about priming it. Yeah, no, that's that's all done. We already did that. Gotcha. There's the open mouth sculpt. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. That is super cool. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Anyways. Uh, but yeah, so are, are you going to paint it where the goat's black? And the wings are like black and red and the dragon's red? Or, or what are you thinking right now? Well, I started with the goat. He's okay. going to be pretty dark. Okay, cool. I'm cool with it. So, I don't know. I'm all right with it. We'll see how it goes. So, yeah. If it starts looking bad, I guess we'll just turn back. Yep. Uh, Melchior says I'm still alive. There are times when I wonder whether or not that's a good thing. But I guess it's acceptable, especially if my being here amuses you folks. I mean, I would say it's a good thing. Why would it not be a good thing? I concur. But yeah, this, uh, this dragon's pretty badass, guys. Let's see. Am I able to share it? Maybe I'll try and share it. Oh, it might not let me. Why not let me? Why not let you? There we go. No, that's not what I wanted to share. <laughs> there we go. There's the dragon. So this is the sculpt I'm expecting to get. Uh, hopefully I get it, you know, before December. Um, I just, this is my favorite dragon. The blue dragon has been my favorite dragon for a long time. So I am super stoked. This will go great facing off with Caladrax on my bookshelf once I get all the miniatures figured out up there. It's going to be great. Meanwhile, back to the Chimera. Although the Chimera is going to be great too. I was thinking you should get those like acrylic risers. 
That's what you should do. I don't know what you're talking about. Put like, a bookshelf so that you could put the miniatures on top of it, but then some would be on acrylic risers, so they would be Oh, like, so it's like like, like steps. Yeah, and then there would be gotcha. something of the larger ones up there, maybe some of the smaller ones down below. Gotcha. And that would help kind of space it out visually. Right. That's what I was thinking you should do. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Oh, O'Neill Flynn's martial arts training got canceled tonight. Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, I'm sorry. How mm -hmm. come? I hope everybody is okay. Roll stats says I'm thinking about starting a Dragonlance campaign. Interesting. Didn't didn't Dragonlance like sue Wizards of the Coast or something like that? Aren't they like suing know. them or something? Oh, you're talking about a recent thing. Yeah, I just like, saw something. They're the like too. suing them. It or was something. Who it was? Yeah, somebody is. It's over them changing the rules or something, or I don't know. It I doesn't matter. I don't remember looking <laughs> about why. You're gonna get roll stats blood remember. pressure. Up. <laughs> well, maybe he knows what I'm talking about. He can clarify. And he said, yeah, that's why. So why are they suing them, though? I don't so, remember why. <laughs> Victor said, Melchior, you are a ray of pure happiness. We are blessed by you being here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never... Uh, I don't know much about Dragonlance, to be honest. Um, I know it's an older setting. It's back, 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 back in like the 80s. But I mean, yeah. I know, like, the books. Yeah. I mean, didn't you read any of the Dragonlance books? No, I've books? never read a D&D book before. Oh, my Ever. gosh. Those were the best. I would read those all the time. Yeah, I never read any of those. Yeah, we Yeah, have Wizards some. of the Coast breached the contract. Yeah. I, I saw something, but I didn't go down that rabbit hole. Again, I don't usually go down those rabbit holes. <laughs> Well, I mean, I just noticed because I used to read so much of their stuff. Yeah. That when I saw it, well, actually when I saw it, it was a cover of one of the books. Like the news article was a cover of one of the books. So yeah. I was thinking that, oh, maybe it's um, like from the bookstore or whatever. So I clicked on it. Right. Melchior says, to see my online persona, you'd almost never know that I suffer from pretty bad clinical depression in real life. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's a bummer. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I don't like hearing that. But you must know you're loved here. We love hearing about the multiple shades of pine and Melchior's fun facts. They're great. Yeah, roll stats is such a Pantone color <laughs> for it. Apparently, it's offensive. What's offensive, roll stats? Are, is this the thing? Like, details. Like, you're just it like, It sounds like yeah. them changing the system. <laughs> like, the inherently evil aspects and stuff like that was the issue. Oh, it breached their contract with them? I, that's what I believe I saw before. Again, I don't go down those rabbit holes. I really try to avoid them as much as possible. Interesting. What? So people are selling things HeroQuest related on Etsy. I'm only on Etsy because I was trying to get that set up. Ooh, which it must be set up because I have a message. Whoa. Uh, Melchior says, I try to be fun and helpful. Maybe because I can't do much to help people offline, you know, in real life. Why do you say that? Why are you unable to help people in real life? So I was bummed that the game got canceled last night. Yeah, I was I was bummed. I wanted to play. Uh, 
but that's okay. So neat. I know, but I was all prepared with my, you know, salad backstory and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would have been more sad if you died, though, within five minutes, right? I mean, correct. We could have made it session zero, two, <laughs> where we just, we TPK and make new characters. It could have just been like, uh, you know, character playing... Yeah. Okay. You know. So, uh, Wizards of the Coast decided not to publish the reboot of the Dragonlance series because they are worried about the backlash they will they will receive from the fun police. Uh, so they canceled the project, even though Weiss and Hickman wrote two thirds of the content already. So they sued. Did they not get paid for writing two thirds, or do they have like like what's um? They probably get paid more on like the. You make more on, like, the royalty side of things. I mean, so. in some things, yeah. Right? I think that's probably why. Right, but... uh, Melchior says I'm over 60 and not in good health generally. Also have high-functioning autism, so I find it difficult to get along with people face-to-face. -face. You know, I would have had no idea that you were over 60, actually. So that's cool. But you can help people. I believe it. And... Just because it's online doesn't mean it's any less helpful. Like we said, we love having you here. And right now is the time of COVID, so right now having friends online is a good way to go. Yeah, I was going to say, right now, that's the ideal way to do it, at least for <laughs> us. Yeah, things are crazy. I don't know. My schools are starting to close. It's wild, guys. It's a wild time. Yes, and our kids are finding ways to deceive us day by day. Yeah. Our daughter... It's we're... fine. We don't need to... Oh, no, we're getting into this. We're getting no, into this. No, I don't want to talk about it. Why? Let's, let's be like... Oh, we're not allowed more... to talk about our family? <laughs> like... Less, you know, stressful. I mean, they're I asleep. I'm not stressed anymore. What else, what else do we have going on? Uh, Monster yeah. of the Week Friday is going to finish. Well, maybe not. Oh, it might yeah. not finish. We'll see if it finishes. Um, but, yeah, that is going to happen Friday. And then Saturday is our Black Rock game. I have a lot of work to do before that game, and I haven't even begun it. So, yeah, it's going to be a crazy couple days leading up to that. It'll be okay, though. I'm sure of it. It'll work out. I'll be ready for the game Saturday. Victor, go kids. Victor says, I mean, kids, listen to your parents and be good. <laughs> O'Neill, Melchior, I totally get it. My boys are autistic. My oldest son is high functioning, and I deal a lot myself also. Melchior says, go back and reread my comment about kids having exactly two speeds. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yup. Kids Very are crazy. true. Totally crazy. But luckily, my five-year-old wants me to drive. We have a, like a beach area in town uh, on the river. And he likes to go there. We haven't been there in a while, but he likes to go there and watch the water. So I might drive over there tomorrow with some books so that I can read to him. So that way he will actually be focused. Because <laughs> today, there was no focus at all. Any way, shape, or form. It was a nightmare. Uh, but what else do we have? Sunday, Persuasion Check, the Halloween edition. Getting spooky. 
with uh, Stories with Bill. And yeah, and then we have. Did you guys decide if ghosts were real the other night, or like? No, we no? did not dive into it. Oh, is uh, that going to be for the Halloween edition? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, we got to it a little bit later, yeah. and I don't think we were up for. I feel like really that's into something it. like if I had a podcast, it'd be about like ghosts. Are ghosts real? No, you wouldn't, because you think they are. That's you exactly. Wouldn't even question that's it. why you need to talk about it, right? Because you're all like, no, because that's called clickbait. If the question is are ghosts real, and all you're doing is saying yes, ghosts are real, then you're clickbaiting it because you're not even well, actually but you could questioning. Say, well, you could say yes, but. You know? There is no butt. Ghosts there don't have is. butts because they aren't they don't exist. Oh my gosh. Stop. Stop. <laughs> it's over. Uh O'Neill Flynn, I just want nice things. Melchior, I sometimes think I would have been fitter with a little one to make me exercise, but I never found anyone I wanted to be with, if you take my meaning. Yeah. I get it. Well, stats says, I just want to play a game. I don't understand why that has to be a political statement. <laughs> What's a political... What? 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 The, we're not the even The lawsuit deal. Politics. Oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't know what was going on. Because <laughs> he said something about Dragonlands. I just saw the article. O'Neill Flynn, everything has become political. I mean, in a way, everything always has been political. Art has always been political. Like, sports have always been political. I just... It's always... If you oh, want to know, I don't know, I shouldn't say this. No, we don't want to get political. Let's continue on. But, <laughs> but Victor I did says ghosts are real, to, just hiding from juice. I did listen to this great little segment on NPR, you know, about why they think things are more political. It's very interesting. So you could go to their website and find it if you want to. All right. It. And so, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah. It was just quality. All right. So. Who, was it Cameron who was giving us monsters to duke it out before? <gasps> oh, yeah. So who would win, Tiamat or Orcus? I'm posing that to the chat. Orcus? Yeah. Can you pull him up? You don't know who Orcus is? No, well, I mean, Miss, like, I've been playing D&D since stop. I was a kid. Stop. I know, like, but, you know, what are all their abilities? That's not something I've read up on in, like... Fifth edition, and I have all his abilities and stats memorized. Like, I just want you to pull up his stats. I don't even think Orcus has been statted yet for 5e. Well, so pull up something for me to look at beyond a picture. Oh, let's see. Let's see. I mean, Orcus should probably win. If I had to guess. I mean, probably. I don't know. Are you sure I said red? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Why? Is there some other color you're thinking of now? No, I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm not sure. Orcus is a CR 26. So he has, he was an out of the abyss. Okay. Then I think that wins because I think. Yeah, but what are their abilities? Oh no, Tiamat's a CR thirty. Hang on, I don't. I'm that's what I want to see. Now I'm curious. What is the Tarasque? Oh my gosh! A Tarasque is a CR thirty as well. You didn't even show me the first one. I'll tell you about it. Okay. it gives us something to talk about. That's why I want to know. But now, like, you're just taking forever. All right. So Orcus in five E. Uh, is a s armor class 17. 20 with the wand of Orcus. Um, hit points. 405. Um, attributes. Strength 27. Dex 14. Con 25. Int 20. Wisdom 20. Charisma 25. A lot of resistance. In, well, not a lot, but cold fire and lightning. But immune to a lot of stuff. Necrotic, poison, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical attacks. Um, so the Wand of Orcus allows for seven charges. 
finger of death, power word kill. You know, you get the idea. I don't need to go any further. Damn. Spellcasting's pretty good. Three legendary actions. What are the legendary actions? Tail. Makes one tail attack. Taste of undeath. Cast chill touch at 17th level. And creeping death. Orcus chooses a point on the ground that he can see within 100 feet of him. A cylinder of swirling necrotic energy, 60 feet tall and with a 10-foot radius, rises from that point and lasts until the end of Orcus' next turn. Creatures in, in that area are vulnerable to necrotic damage. And that costs wow. two actions. Uh... Yeah, I don't think this is a, a creature you're going to mess with. It's a plus 19 to hit. And average, well, damage is 3d8 plus 8 plus 2d12 necrotic damage. Yeah, no, this this is rough. This is rough. Yeah, but you're putting him up against two. Tiamat. Tiamat. But like, I don't think Tiamat gosh. can hold it. I don't think she can handle it. So her armor class is harder, 25. Hit points, 615. That's more. He had like 400. Yes. Her speed is more, so she can cover more ground. Her her actual attributes are higher. 30, 10, 30, 26, 26, 28. She has immunities to acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical. Uh, yeah. But Orcus does like necrotic damage and stuff and uh, and a lot of magical damage so that wouldn't matter uh limited magic immunity uh, oh well orcus isn't casting spells of sixth level or lower <laughs> uh She does get regeneration. That's interesting. She gets three attacks. Uh, her claw does more damage. It's 46 plus 10 slashing. Uh, actually, it doesn't because technically uh, the wand does 3d8 plus 2d12 plus 8. So actually, the, he does a little more damage. Oh, but she gets more attacks. Yeah, but she has more hit points. Oh, and she more gets attacks. more attacks. She gets three attacks. He gets just one, basically. Oh, no, he gets two with the wand. And she gets three. He only gets two attacks? Yeah. Yep. And then she's obviously got breath weapon. So maybe she would. I mean, if you actually get mechanical, Tiamat would beat Orcus. And then the Tarrasque would probably beat Tiamat. Not as good of an armor class, but a little bit more hit points. Um, is going to be immune to some of her damage types. Some of her breath weapons. Immune to a couple of her abilities, like Frightened. No Frightening. Or Frightened Condition, whatever. Blah, can't talk. Uh... Yeah, Tarask makes five attacks. So the Tarask would whoop Tiamat's butt. His bite does 4d12 plus 10 piercing. Oh, but it's not magical. Oh. You know what? Has no chance. Can't hurt Tiamat. That. Yep. So technically, the Tarrasque would have an impossible time beating Tiamat. Straight mechanics. Hmm, interesting. That's probably so that if you have a party that's, you know, really good at X, Y, and Z, you have a variety of monsters as a DM 
to go after them, right? Like you have, here's their CR. You want monsters that are weaker and stronger in opposite areas. Oh, if you have areas. players that are because, whooping on monsters that high? Because you have players that need variety. And usually what a party does, like you'll find that a party fills certain spots and they're, they... They utilize certain strategies over and over again. Right. Right? So you can play upon that aspect and use counter The thing that's weird strategies. is when you're at that level, I don't think anybody's just dealing straight bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage. I think almost every class makes your attacks magical by the time you're high enough to do that. Anyway. Like, to take on a Tiamat or a, you know? I mean, maybe. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. But yes, I think that is the intention of the design. Like, I mean, so to these make monsters are going to have trouble, like, pairing them up against each other, right? Because of that reason. Maybe. But a Taras could just grab Tiamat and drown her. <laughs> right? I mean... If it was smart enough, but and according to its stats, I think it is smart enough. I think everything at that level is pretty smart. But yeah, I think the the intent is to have variety in what the monsters are good at and aren't good at. Right, because parties always fill specific roles. Right. And they're really good at. Or they have things. a defense to something, or. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People think that they don't strategy build, but they strategy build. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What, uh, so on Bly Manor, we've got one, or, we have two episodes left, right? Eight and nine. This is going to be, um, it's going to be more orange than red. Okay. I don't know. I'm just letting you know. I was updating you on the progress that I'm making over here. Mm. Just in case you weren't paying attention. I'm looking straight at the screen. Um, yeah, but in case you were not, you know, processing <laughs> what I was doing. I don't know. Fine. I was keeping you posted. Whatever. Just updating you. Whatever. So what were you saying? Bly um, Manor? Yeah, Bly Manor. Episode 8 and 9 are left. Uh, do you think it's going to end well? Do you think it's going to end in a satisfying way for you? No, of course not. I, yeah, I don't know where the show's going. It's not really... I don't know. It just does not seem like a satisfying ending, like in any way, shape, or form. I feel like at the end of it, I'm be like, I wish I didn't watch it. Really? Yeah. It, it's. I want to know what happens, but it started last night's episode. Really, I don't know. I didn't like it. What part about last night's episode? I don't understand. Well, I don't want to spoil it, but I don't understand what the two things are doing and why they would have the strat or the idea that they had and try to go through with that it, that just didn't make sense and then the doll face things like i don't why are they like that i don't know i want to know why they're doll faces but it doesn't tell you i have a feeling we're not going to find out no because they've been there a long time they said that yeah i i don't know we'll see we'll see I mean, that one, yeah, I guess that's, I don't know. I'm just not liking that. I think that's stupid. It doesn't make sense. Just being there for a long time turns your face into a doll? No. Nope. You're, it's supposed to represent the fact that you're, like, losing yourself or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. Right? Anyways. Anyways, at this point, I feel like I'm on the not recommending it bus. Really? Yep. Yeah, because it's not really that creepy to me. It's just whatever. I mean, it isn't super scary. And that's, I was hoping true. it would be. 
You know, I was hope I was when you said, "Oh, it's got the same director as the Haunting of Hill House." I'm like, "Yes, let's do this." And now I just I need closure on this. Now you're just show. like, I want to know what happens. Yeah, I want to know what happens, but I don't really feel like I said the last episode kind of pushed me away from it a little. But yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, I guess we're going to see what happens. You could jump over to this other show that I started watching mm, that is no. good, and we could watch that one instead. No. That's what should happen. I'm not jumping over. After this show, I'm done. Done with it all. I'm going to go watch Star Wars. No, you're going to watch this other show. What is this other show? It's about... No. Possessions. Oh my god. Is it the actual scary one that you got freaked out and wouldn't watch anymore? Because I'll watch that. Some of the episodes are creepy and some of them are comical and some of them are like it's hit or miss and some of them are just cheesy. Okay. But it's a weird show. Mm, I don't know. I don't think I can do that. I don't think it's for me. It's about these people who work for the Catholic Church, and they're investigating possessions. Okay. And they're part of the core team that approves people to get an exorcism. So they verify possessions <laughs> before they get an exorcism. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> it's, it's, not it sound, it's great. <laughs> it's super interesting. <laughs> You guys, because, like, I don't know, the Catholic Church only does, like, so many possessions a year, so many exorcisms a year. They don't do a lot. <laughs> but every so often, man, they do them, and you're just like, what's going on? No. I'm not. <laughs> you're not thinking what's going on? No. I think it's all hocus pocus. Like, no. Oh, well, guys, I'm over here thinking, what's going on? What's these happening people? here? <laughs> I just gotta know what this is all about. We're not watching Luna. Okay, <laughs> Dad. Oh my goodness. We don't want to watch Luna. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. So, possessions. No, it doesn't happen. Can you get possessed in D&D? &D? Sure. I mean, I guess it'd be like mind control, right? So what's Probably. the equivalent? Would that be mind control? Probably. Like some sort of spell? Isn't I don't know. that a spell? I feel like spell? there's something that would do it. Isn't that a spell? What, mind control? Yeah. Probably. Wouldn't a vampire have it? No. You don't think so? I don't think so. I think I looked at vampire stats recently. I mean, then otherwise, it's a mind player. There you go. They would have something like that. Um, but legitimately, I think mind control is an actual spell. Oh, probably. Mind Flare has Dominate Monster. Ooh, here we go. I feel like vampires would have it. I'm just saying. Charm. Yeah, Mind Control is a spell. It's the seventh level enchantment. I didn't say it wasn't. 100 feet. You can control the mind of a target within range. You must make a wisdom saving throw on a failure. You take total control of the mind of your target, making him nothing more than a mindless puppet. On a success, the target resists your efforts to mind control it. And you can't attempt to do it again for 24 hours. For the duration, the target is considered stunned. Yeah, only acting on your commands. You can use an action to command the creature. 
The target then uses its reaction to take one of the following actions, dash, dash disengage, dodge, or help action, an object interaction, or a single attack. Ooh, and then as an action, you can deepen your control over the target. Mm. You can see through the target's eyes and hear what it hears. Gotcha. Yeah. Sweet. It's sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just saying. I don't think that would be the same thing as possession. No, but I don't know. I mean, there's some sort of thing that like a demon or a devil has, or like some sort of. Probably. Whatever god of the underworld. Uh, okay, so here we go. Ghosts. <laughs> Possession. One humanoid that the ghost can see within five feet of it must succeed on a DC 13 charisma saving throw or be possessed by the ghost. The ghost then disappears and the target is incapacitated and loses control of its body. The ghost now controls the body but doesn't deprive the target of awareness. The ghost can't be targeted by any attack, spell, or other effect, except ones that turn undead, and it retains its alignment, intelligence, yada, yada, yada. Possession lasts until the body drops to zero hit points. The ghost ends it as a bonus action, where the ghost is turned or forced out by an effect, like the dispel evil and good spell. When the possession ends, the ghost reappears in an unoccupied space within five feet of the body. Uh, okay. There you go. I don't understand the recharge, but that is okay. What? If you possess them. So, it's got a recharge ability, which means you roll a d6. Uh-huh. And on a six, it can do the ability again. But it's not... It just seems weird to me because it's like it, once it possesses someone, it can be in there indefinitely, basically. Yeah, until you get forced out because you're possessed. Right, but yeah, it still just doesn't seem like it needed to be limited. That's all because it doesn't. You know, I don't know. That's all. I mean, I guess it's going to have you can go back and forth with it being possessed or possessing someone boot it out, and then possess it again. You know, it keeps just going back and forth, but that just seems kind of silly. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, I don't know. Whatever, man. Uh-oh, O'Neill Flynn says, my wife blasting her tune, her true crime podcast all day. Milk here. Fun fact, there was a text-based computer adventure game where you can get paralyzed by ghosts, but you get past them by turning on a vacuum cleaner to suck up the ghost. Oh, that sounds kind of That's fun. hilarious. Roll stat. I love it. Which one? I'm obsessed with sword and scale. Milk here. I'm self-possessed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Your phone's vibrating again. Yeah? I received an attachment. <laughs> from who's attached who's attached what for you I don't know I can tell you about it you're probably not going to be interested in it though oh probably not it's, it's political isn't it's it probably not D&D &D related <laughs> uh, I mean every so often it is I saw yeah, a Finch picture is like that. he'll randomly send me a meme like once every couple months and it, it'll be gaming related <laughs> and, but it'll be something that you know i've seen so today or yesterday yeah it was the cat when it steps on the battle mat and so it's like it's got a photoshop cat like bigger than the mountains it's kind of funny but i have seen it a bunch It was the attachment of the city council here has a position open. 
Oh, we already knew that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I can't wait till that, that big blue dragon shows up. Sounds like Luigi's Mansion. You know, I never played that game. I actually heard a lot of good things about that. Was that Super Nintendo? Luigi's Mansion? I mean, I know nothing about it. Yeah, I know you don't. You, like, I don't know how you grew up in the time you did and were not exposed to, like, real video games. <laughs> Like, I can't, like, your brothers didn't have a Nintendo or something? I think they had an Atari at one point, but my brothers yeah, didn't live with me. Atari was, like, before you were born, Paula. My brothers didn't <laughs> live with me. Like, I, thought, I, didn't, I thought when you were little, they were there. No, I never lived with, like, Andrew. I mean, when I was, like, two, maybe. Amy was already in college when I was born. Hmm. So well, Andrew and I only lived in the same house for a couple years. Even Robert, we only lived in the same house till I was six. Right. So I have a lot of only child traits. A lot of I mean, you But were. I also have a lot of, like, you know, youngest child traits. Do you? You can look him up. Do you want to look him up? No, no. I'm good. Luigi's Mansion has a great soundtrack for a silly haunted house game of D&D. Too bad my mom hates video game music. <laughs> uh, my kids love it. Actually, the, the other day I put something on. And my, my son, Gabe, our two-year-old, started shaking his butt actually to the rhythm. Like, sometimes he can be on point <laughs> with shaking his butt where he'll go side to side. But the funnier part wasn't even that. It was like his head going up and down like he's at a rock concert with the, the booty shake. <laughs> it, it did not look as awkward as it sounds like it would. <laughs> it may have been alternating between booty shake and head banging but. speaking of i should i should just what, booty pop shake? In, no i should just pop in there and make sure everything's going okay in a second speaking of booty shake <laughs> no that's totally how it came across <laughs> oh man i can go check on him you're painting anyway. no it's okay i never know what to talk about when TV but that but neither do i I know. I, I, I never. In the quiet. I never have any idea what I should put in front of the camera <laughs> when you go inside. Uh, I had an Atari Twenty Six Hundred only because it was cheaper than an NES at the time. Some of the best music I'd heard in a video game was the music for for Hocus Pocus. Do you guys do you guys use music when you run your games or like background noise or anything like that? I feel like the two times I tried to do it, you guys didn't even notice or care. I kind of like it. Yeah. I think people let like the awkward silence sit for a second. Sometimes a little bit more with oh, music. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. To me, it's not worth the effort usually. Oh well, running. I mean, I usually just go in and like find a you know YouTube mm -hmm. video for four hours or whatever, mm -hmm. and turn it on. Sets the mood. Yeah, but it's easy yeah. when we're playing Tomb of Annihilation. I feel like to find forest it's a dragon. sounds. Yeah, or a jungle or whatever. Yeah. It's a jungle sound. Like, how do you find good music? I mean, I guess you could just let Lord of the Rings soundtrack. 
That's a quality soundtrack. Sure. But I can listen to You're going to be like in the middle of like a, a deep great. social like um, scene. And then like a battle ballad is going to come out. Or <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Not true. I'll go check on it real quick and get some water in there. <laughs> Bill says, I do background music and sound effects. The Wilhelm scream is great for deaths. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, I love it. So do you have like a soundboard at your table for that? Or do you just have a computer up on the side? Like, how do you do that? Cameron says, music is nice and ambiance is good. But ambiance always makes me wish I had a soundboard to apply more sound effects. Interesting. Yeah, I don't even want to mess with that when I'm running a game. It's too much. In my, my opinion. Trying to mess with a bunch of sound effects and stuff. An app on your iPad. Oh. Gotcha. That makes sense. I guess I just, I don't know. I feel like when I'm running a game, I already have enough to keep track of, you know? Adding another thing is not in my skill set, I don't think. I'm already struggling juggling everything else to run a game. Should have made her... Fill up my water. Dang it, I'm out. Out of water. Water. High quality H2O. I think Paula wants to paint this blue dragon when it shows up. I was not thinking that she would. I was thinking I would paint it. But I mean, if she wants to, I'm not going to say no. <clears throat> Probably won't be here for at least a month, so I probably won't even get started on it until maybe December. But it'll be a cool one. It's gonna be awesome. I do kind of want to get back to painting miniatures too. <clears throat> uh, it's not too hard to track and it acts as a soundboard so you can bring up the ambient noise or bring it down with sliders. Likewise, for background music, it's actually pretty slick. Hmm. Yeah, I just, I don't, I, I don't know anything about all that stuff, and it just seems like it would be overwhelming, that's all. No gear. Fun fact, I just brushed enough loose fur out of my cat to make myself another cat. Uh, that's concerning. <laughs> Struggle and juggling sounds like a rap album written by a homeless clown. <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. So Cameron just said, struggle and juggling sounds like a rap album written by a homeless clown. <laughs> uh. So, um. Yeah. Gabe is not in bed. Of course. He is in Lily's bed. Oh. They are cuddled together fast Sleepy. asleep. Okay. So I'll see him at like two. I don't know if she's about to fall off the bed. <laughs> we should probably put him he's, in the crib. He's sleeping in the middle of the bed. Of course. It's his bed now. You know. I wonder why he goes up there. Because he did that the other night too rather than come to our room. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean... Well, no, no but like other bad times parents we are. Or something. No, he literally went straight to a bedroom to find somebody. You can favorite effects like sword clashing and arrows landing, or screams and stuff. So they are available at the click of a button. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm aware of like how they do that. Uh, I was looking at one a long time ago, like October last year. I was just curious. Um, you can get them for pretty cheap, like an actual soundboard. And it's the same thing. You still have like software associated with it. And you can hot button certain things. Or hot key. Um, 
<laughs> my cat always wants to be brushed before he goes out. It's become our routine. I'm always tr trying to pick out, pick up other cats. Wants to look his best. O'Neal Flynn, Roll Stats, it's the Serial Podcast. Interesting. Uh, the other video game I liked the music of was Jill of the Jungle. Its music was in CMF, Creativity Music Corner, or Creative Music Corner. And I especially liked the piece named Zeppelin. Hmm, never heard of it. Jill of the Jungle. What's that? A video game of some sort? I don't know. I've never heard of that. Oh, are you guys still talking about video game? Music. It was Milk Gear. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, I just at least try and, like, put something on. Make it interesting. Right? Are you going to ever get into dabbling with the actual sound effects, too? That would be fun. <laughs> well, that's what we were talking about. Because Roll Stats does that. He's got, like, the screen. Is he and... doing that for our game? Probably. I don't know. I can't imagine. I guess he might be. I don't know. Are you doing that for our game of Keep, keep on the Borderlands? You're getting Paula excited over here about the possibilities. I, yeah, I'm so bummed we didn't play. It's okay, but, like, also, it would have been more fun to play. <laughs> what? RuneScape music forever. I laughed. Um, oh, yeah, do it, Melkier. That'd be cool. So, Cameron, why RuneScape music? I don't think I've ever heard the music for RuneScape. I don't think I've ever played it. Roll stats. Fun fact I have a Led Zeppelin tattoo. The four symbols. It was the first tattoo I got. Oh, that's cool. I have a Led Zeppelin bomber jacket. Yeah, that's true. Very true. We have... No, we don't have Led Zeppelin on our wall. That's the Doors or something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a big difference there. Yeah, we have I a know. bunch of their records, I though. Yeah, I know. Quite a few Led Zeppelin records. I mean, how many... I don't even know how many records they have. Um, I don't know. Great question. I feel like they didn't have that many, though. I don't know. Oh, no. He says, oh, yes, God. of course. I use it for all games. <laughs> so now Paula's excited. Yes. So you, uh, yeah, I don't know. You're setting the bar high, man. You're setting the bar high. Difficult to play some of those old music pieces since they required DOS programs to play at all. Oh, yeah. I remember using DOS to play video games. I hated that. And then it would say, flip to page, blah, okay. blah, blah. Read so, Led Zeppelin has eight studio albums, four live albums, nine compilation albums, 16 singles, and eight music downloads. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. So really, the answer is eight, in yes. my opinion. Yeah, I don't count live albums or greatest I hits mean, albums. like, yeah. Although, I remember in high school having some friends who were such diehard fans, they would buy Slipknot Live in Japan or, like, just whatever the, the CD was. Whatever it was. Yes. Well, and they were, so there were rock magazines. I don't know if you ever remember looking at those in high school, but they would have like catalog, like a two page advertisement catalog thing, right? And it would be like to this company that sells CDs or whatever and, and like rock, rock CDs, rock memorabilia, things like that. And so you could order the actual catalog. And when you'd order the actual catalog, it had every album by every rock band you can think of, including all their, like, obscure things that, like, you know, Metallica live I in England. I didn't know this. Yeah. It, so anyways, um, Jose, for example, used to buy some of those ones, like if it was a band he was really into. So, yeah. I remember that pretty well, actually. <laughs> 
Can't like burn you a copy or something? Oh no, I, I had all of, I would get stuff on cassette from him. So he would, because that's how you did it back then. We're talking like 90s, before CD burning was a thing, right? Oh, okay. So this is like early high school, middle school. And so yeah, he would, uh, so I'd take a tape over. He would then put the CD in. The problem is you have to play the CD the whole time and hit record to record it to the tape. So it takes a long ass time. Plus a tape stops at the end of side one. And so then you have to flip it over. Mm -hmm. Now we were always smart. We bought, we would buy the 90 minute tapes. And so that way if a song got cut off, we would then just start from the beginning of that song on the other side and Sometimes we would add like a couple extra songs from other CDs at the end of that tape. So I used to have a bunch of tapes like that. Gotcha. But none of the live stuff. I didn't want that crap. The things we used to have to do. Yup. Okay. All right. I missed some stuff here. Uh, O'Neill Flynn always thought about getting those tattooed on me. Cameron, RuneScape music is simple, happy, and catchy as all hell. Plus, I have a lot of good memories of shopping trees to that music. I'm assuming he means chopping. Uh, you like Melkier a lumberjack? Says, That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so Melkier says... <laughs> I really did. I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know that many people that are like, oh, yeah, I have fond memories of chopping trees. Like, I don't know. I'm or just. Or a kid that just chopped down trees like, in the woods. You I just, mean. like, glossed over that fact. Like, it didn't even happen. And, like, I felt like that was a big deal. <laughs> Sorry. Melkier Sorry. says, Ugh, I really did not like those games which use the go to page X and type what you find at Y location for copy protection. Yeah, it was really dumb. Wait, what are you talking about? Old games. So back in the day, when all games had to be run through DOS, you would put the floppy disk in. Then you would do like CD slash games or whatever, and it would pr bring up the games. And then you'd have to pick the game that you put the disk in. And then you would have to go run.exe or whatever. Anyways, that's how you got the game going. But before it would do that, Part. Once you did the run, it would then ask you a random, turn to this page, this paragraph, this sentence, and this word, what word is that? And it was for copy protection to keep you from, like, stealing the game, you know, for your friends. Uh, it was ridiculous. Oh. But you would have to do that. The problem is, you know, when you're, I don't know how old I was, maybe 9 or 10, and I would lose stuff... <laughs> Like the books to the games, you know, you kind of were screwed. So, um, I had one of those games called Surf City, aka The Settlers, in some parts of the world, but the instruction booklet was missing one set of codes. Oh, that sucks. O'Neill Flynn, that's over a 10 year span of being together. Then the page and plant albums, too. It was a good game, but a pain to get started. Uh, I've ripped most of my music CDs to MP3s so I can play them on my phone while I'm waiting for something or traveling. So I did that a long time ago on my desktop computer that stopped working one day. Yeah, that was great. Uh, O'Neill Flynn, my stereo had an option to play only one track at a time. It made easy to record to a cassette tape. Oh, yeah. That's well, interesting. Well, everybody could do where you could just, like, push play and just skip it. It was the memory button, song. I think, you'd have to push. Yeah. You know, or whatever. But, yeah. That was there. Mm hmm I remember that. Uh, Cameron says, RuneScape is a skill-based MMORPG. Uh, and the skills cover... Oh, yeah, I know. Gotcha. So, he was he was doing it in the game. Oh, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> I was like... No, I thought he was talking about in real life. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm over here like, <laughs> you know, 
Like, Cameron's like a fucking, like, lumberjack blacksmith or something. See, I'm I don't thinking know. he's like the kids I grew up with in Ypsilanti. We used to go in the woods, and, like, they would chop shit down all the time. So, whatever. Not a big deal. I mean, a lot of crazy oh, shit happens. yeah. I feel like that's going to be what... That's what Caleb would do if we <laughs> lived on the edge of yeah. a forest. No, no, that There's happens. zero... Yeah, that's 100% mm-hmm. the kid he would be. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't do that either? If we had a house that had, like, just forest behind it, you wouldn't want to go down and just chop a tree down to, just for the hell of it? I mean, not... To, no, I wouldn't just no chop it down for, there. for the hell of it. So like, then you would I be like, curious, I fu- I'd chop curious down a tree. about yeah. chopping down yeah. trees? Yeah. Like, you guys are weird. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I want to let the nature, like, live. <laughs> What am I going to chop it down for nothing? Then it's It's not useless. for nothing. It's conquest. It's a trophy. <laughs> now, if I was making a fire pit and I wanted you want to chop, would you chop a tree down? For, for the fire pit, yeah. then I would consider chopping down a small-ish tree. No, you got to do a big tree. You know, that would work. <laughs> yeah, that's what you can find. That would work as a log for, you know. Well, none of them would because they'd be too wet. You'd have to wait a long time for them to, like, be ready to burn. No, I mean for seats, like to have seating. Like you put you put logs around a fire pit. That's so what they, you do. So, you so why would you get stuff. a tiny, you said a tiny log. No, I said just like not super big. <laughs> you said a small one. It's, it's child size seating. <laughs> I just don't want to ruin the forest. We have so many forest issues already. Oh my goodness. We don't need to, you, you know. Hippie. You hippie. We don't need to make it worse, You're right? You're such a hippie. <laughs> now, gears. Fortunately, I eventually found the last code online when I got the internet. So I made myself a cheat sheet with all of the codes, just in case I lost the instruction. I laminated the printout. I still have it stuck up on my wardrobe because I still be able to occasionally play it. That's wild. That is absolutely wild. Roll stat says controversial opinion here. I'm sure. But I'll die on this hill. Jimmy Page is the best guitarist alive, full stop. Cameron says, I'm with you with that uh, that bill. Uh so yeah, I don't have an opinion on who the best guitarist is. I don't know enough about music to have an opinion, I think. Well, I mean, what are you talking about, though, when you say the best guitarist? Like, are you talking about the most amount of skill or somebody who is revolutionary for the industry? Or, you know, what are you talking about? Because I I feel like sometimes... Plays the most difficult stuff. This comes up with, like, you know, sports, where I always hear people or see people arguing about, like... Who's better, you know, this player or Michael Jordan or whatever, you know? <laughs> like, people say stupid stuff like that, and it's like, well, I mean, you can tell clearly which one is better, but the point is is that you, you? feel like the other can one... You both? I don't know, but I'm just saying, like, you feel like the other one is more influential, so they're they're good in their own sort of ways, too, right? I mean, I mean like, sports, it's a little bit... It's easier and harder at the same time because, you, you know, most of them are team sports, right? So so it's a little bit harder to compare. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be but, the same way with music where it's like, yeah, you can say that somebody's better, but, you know, this person is better because their technical skills are more advanced due to the but fact that But how do you know other, their technical skills are more no, advanced? No, but that That's other people, that other people in the past have made it so that people were trying to emulate them, thus evolving music in and of itself because they were influential. Right, right, right. So how do you judge if someone is more skilled or talented at the guitar by their 30 written songs? I mean, you're, you're judging it by what they've put out of their own. It's not like there's a thing that, oh, if you can do this song, like, you're the best in the world. It's the hardest one. You know what I mean? Like, how do you judge No, that? but I'm just saying, like... How do you judge who's better technically, though? Um, you listen to them play. I don't understand what the problem is. They just, they play. 
and then you judge who's better. Like, I don't get what the but issue that's not, is. That's completely biased. That's opinion. That's not factual. So when you're judging a skill, it should be something you're judging by but it, fact. It mean like, like, if I'm faster than Caleb, it's not like someone stands there and goes, run. Oh, he ran. Okay, now you run. Oh, based on what I saw with my eyes... I think this person's no, faster. No, but they're using like context clues. You're over analyzing. They're using context this is clues insane. too. <laughs> You're ridiculous. What are you trying this to is do? Insanity. I'm just over here trying to paint <laughs> a dragon. This is madness. <laughs> I'm trying to paint this dragon over here. This dra the dragon portion. Cameron says I'd rank June Page very high on a number of categories. Well, stat says you don't. Music is art. So then you, your opinion is just that. It's an opinion. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just argue to argue. Jimmy Page is not the best guitarist of all time. How about that? So who do you think is the best guitarist of all time? I don't know. Marilyn Manson's guitarist on uh, Antichrist Superstar. Because the riff for the beautiful people is like the best ever. There's so many good songs on that album. Anita Strauss, she's pretty damn amazing. I think she was Alice Cooper's guitarist in recent years. Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, I don't know, man. Jimmy Page is God level, and everyone else is at Epic Hero level. <laughs> Full stat says, exactly, that's the point. You don't judge art based on technical skill. That premise is ridiculous. Yeah, that's why I'm saying you talk about, like, here's their I was just poking at right? Paula because she it's said technical as, No, I said it's skill. This, And then I, I was like, well, how do you determine who's better technically? No, but that's what I was saying. Like, it's about their, like, influence, right? Like, that's how art is, you know? And people get all, like, in a tizzy about, like, minimalism or whatever. I'm sorry, a line across some some paper is not art. Look, we don't need to have this look, conversation look, right now. The banana that was duct taped to the wall is not art. It's not art. We don't need to have this conversation. Yoko right Ono now. is 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 it her fault? Did she start all the that stuff? The weird art that's not art. No. What do you mean weird art that's the weird not art? That's not art. art. <laughs> no, what are you? You're so weird. You've got all sorts of people. I'm just harassing. That you. were I part know. of I'm that. I'm just trying you know? to poke the bear. Got like Pollock and Warhol. They were huge players during that time, right? <laughs> so who is the best guitarist, Juice? If you say Santana, I'm gonna eat a hippo in one bite. Do you know how much cholesterol that is? I mean, Santana's pretty great. <laughs> No. He, a lot of people I do mean, think like, he's the best of all time, though. He, no, he's good, but, like, well, we're not best of all Tom time. Tom Morello, wasn't he a bassist, not a guitarist? I think he's the bassist of Rage Against the Machine. Wes Borland from Limp Biscuit was a great bassist. I loved him. But I, I loved him because he dressed up all goofy. <laughs> uh Uh, no, but you'll be able to tell us after. I was just going to say, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was waiting for someone to I say Hendrix. I appreciate it. I appreciate what, it. What, Hendrix? That's what I was going for when I said who's more influential, right? Maybe. Another controversial opinion. Clapton. Meh. Oh, you don't like Clapton? A lot of people say he's amazing, though. Interesting. That's that's interesting to me. What you're looking at says the answer is Petrucci. I don't even know who that is. B.B. King is a contender. See, but then you get into comparing decades and eras, right? You go so far back, it's like, 
I don't know. I feel like music evolves. And so the people who come out now can play the stuff from old days. But the people from the old days that's can't why, play the new stuff. That's why I'm saying Hendrix is so good, right? Because he paved the way. Like, he changed, you know. The sound. The industry. Like, here's what, like, the crazy stuff that he did. Did he innovate all that style, that sound? You know. Was it the acid? And, like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. He would take, like, four hits of acid and then play like that. I don't know like, what that Like, you means. know how, no, like, you, how good you have to be in order to do no, something Paula, like I've that? No, Paula, I've never done acid. I mean, Tell I'm, me how difficult I'm not is. saying that I have because I haven't, but I'm just <laughs> saying yeah. that I am <laughs> aware <laughs> of how these things uh, work. Right. You know? Uh, Pete Townsend was doing everything that Hendrix was while writing actually good songs. Interesting. You don't think Jimi Hendrix has actually good songs? I mean, I don't know. That's interesting. Keith Richards. Oh, I yeah, I'm not no. a Keith Richards guy. I'm Pass. with you on that one. Every Keith Richards riff you've heard that is good was actually done in studio by... Ry Cooter, he's number two on the list. What you looking at? Petrucci is the guitarist for Dream Theater. Hmm. Still don't know. I don't know a lot of these other. I mean, yeah, obviously I've heard all these names, but trying to put a song to who we're talking about in some of these is difficult. Melk, your opinion? Him of the. Cherubim, I don't even know what that says, is the what? most beautiful piece of a Cherubim? acapella music ever written. Which version of Clapton? Yardbirds, Cream, Derek, and the Dominoes. Older solo stuff? Eddie Van Halen paved the way for a lot of metal. Man, I'm not a Van Halen fan. I'm... I'm not really a fan of a lot of 80s rock. Oh, yeah. Dream Theater was from 85. I'm sorry. That's not going to work for me. Progressive rock. Gotcha. Is what it specified as. Gotcha. But I also am not a Nirvana fan. There's Here's my controversial opinion. I can't stand Nirvana. At all. Like, it is the only band for the last 20 years where when they come on the radio, I feel like I have to change it. Kid Rock is starting to do that to me, but Nirvana has done that to me for 20 years where it's like, oh, change. <laughs> I can't stand them. Okay, okay, more controversy and judge me if you want, but John Mayer is a phenomenal guitarist. I agree, Roll Stats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like John Mayer a little. Like, I think it's pleasant to listen to. I'm not, like, excited to listen to it. I don't own anything by him. But, I mean, it's good, like, elevator music, I guess. What you're looking at says, I hate Nirvana, but I'm a thrash metal guy. Thank you so much. I don't care what kind of guy you are. If you are not down with Nirvana, you're good in my book, buddy. O'Neill Flynn, Sinister Gates from Avenged Sevenfold. I love Avenged Sevenfold. Love them. And yes, I would agree. Didn't, um... <laughs> they all have stupid names in Avenged Sevenfold, though. Limp Bizquick. Oh, dude, I love Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I'm sorry you don't like them, man. They, they had, like, the best songs for 14-year-old me. Didn't John Mayer play our wedding song or whatever? No, that was Jason Mraz. Mm. She doesn't even know our wedding song. Guys, Are see this? Sure? See this? This is how you never have to sleep on the couch. <laughs> the wife screws up the wedding song. I'm not good with stuff like or that. Or the anniversary day or whatever. That's not true. I know mm -hmm. that. Do you? Yeah. Do you? What was the date? The 21st. What was the day of June. the week? It was a... 
Friday. Why do you have to think about that so It was much? a Friday evening. <laughs> uh, kind of. It was more like afternoon into the evening. It started at 5. The wedding or the ceremony? The ceremony started at 5. Everybody left that work late. early. Yeah, it was. Was it really? Yeah, it was late because I went to get my hair done at noon and I was like, why did I get my hair done so early? Really? Because then I went and set up. Hmm. I had to set up the wedding. Yeah, I remember that. Hmm. Yeah. Waking the Fallen was a perfect album. Everything else, Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, Cameron. No. I So I love Avenged Sevenfold. Almost every album of theirs. From when they were screaming all the time, which I'm not as big a fan of just screaming, um, to the new stuff. I'm cool with it. I love them. Valkyrie, you know Home Free or Voice Play? I like acapella. I'm so confused. What? Oh, oh so yeah, I was just reading the... I don't need to go back on those. It's okay. Victor's back. Hello again. I am back from the dog walk with ice cream for everyone. Oh, dude, don't say that. We don't have any ice cream. And I love ice cream. Well, then you shouldn't eat all the ice cream. Um, then we still have some. Nope. Oh, gosh. So what you're looking at says, was supposed to see Ted Nugent this year, but postponed due to the Rona. Uh, I, I can't stand him. He lives here in Michigan. And I can't stand him. I've never been able to stand him. It was hilarious when they had his character on Celebrity Deathmatch, though. <laughs> That used to be a thing. It was the best. Could you imagine it now? Like all the rappers out there, like little this, little that. Like oh, it'd be great. They, they would have they would have like a battle royal of like forty Lils for the right to call themselves Lil. <laughs> oh, it'd be so good. Mm -hmm. I was going to see Kings X tonight, but it got postponed until twenty twenty one. King's I, uh, X? Is that a movie or is that a play? Sounds like a movie. But yeah, I don't know. These are going pretty good for some fire. Fiery style wings. Oh, is that what you're going for? Yeah, is that going okay? Yeah, it seems like it's flowing like that. It'll get there. I mean, like, it's just a base coat, but... Yeah, I'm not a ZZ Top fan either, really. Um, I saw ZZ Top in concert one time. Yeah? Yeah, actually in Ionia. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that seems kind of fitting that they were there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was for the Ionia Free Fair. Gotcha. Or whatever. Um, I knew somebody who won tickets on the radio. <laughs> gotcha. Ooh, I love that. Was supposed to see Primus uh, covering Rush's album Farewell oh. to Kings, Wolf Mother, and The Sword, also postponed. Oh, that sounds like it could be good. I feel like I just want to see Primus. That would be awesome. I don't know who the other people were. Victor says, it is okay, Paula. I will eat his share of the ice cream. What? No. No. I do want some ice cream. It's kind of, it's just like too cold for ice cream. Or nachos. Though. Oh man, loaded up nachos sound amazing. I'll just settle for some pork chops. I told my team at work I would report back to them. Yeah, they were good. And how it went. I just wish we had barbecue sauce. <laughs> I cooked pork chops tonight for the first time ever. Yeah, we let the vegetarian cook us meat. I mean, usually it, most stuff turns out pretty good. Yeah, I've never had a problem with being cooked for meat tonight. Only pizza. Only pizza. She'll undercook the dough on pizza sometimes. I, I'm always worried I'm going to burn it. <laughs> but it's only a problem. Like, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Moving on. <laughs> but no, everybody who t we talk to... When they find out you cook the meat, even though you don't eat meat, they're like 
surprised. Like, every time. They're like, is it good? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, best turkey I ever met, uh, ever had was Paula's. Every, every time she's made turkey, it's been better than every other time I've had turkey not by her. It's pretty great, I hear. Uh, that last link was to Song of Durin. Roll Stats says, I have a taste for a double cheeseburger from, fry, from Five Guys. I haven't had Five Guys in years. Is that the place that you kept going to? Yeah. And um, Caleb was in the yeah, hospital? Yeah, and that's the last time I went. <laughs> yeah, I know. There was like nothing. That was the worst hospital. Oh, but the burgers were so good. Yeah, for you. There was like zero things I could eat at the hospital. Like, yeah, I remember. That was insane. Victor likes the wing going from red to orange. Van Drake says, I saw Primus at OzFest many years ago and the original Black Sabbath lineup. Oh, that would have been great. I, I always oh, wanted to go good. to OzFest when I was younger. Somebody mentioned Avenged Sevenfold. I saw them. Yeah, I saw them too. With uh, Shinedown. So I'm at the EMU Convocation them. Center. They were with like um, Mushroom Head and mm. Marilyn Manson and Slayer. Uh, yeah, that would have been fun. I always wanted to see Manson. It, it was great. It was one of his first, like, it was his first time back at, like, DTE or whatever after he got kicked out, remember? Yeah. Did he get kicked out again? Um, no, I don't think so. Think he, he, but he well, was, no, not, like, that, like Oh, you like, mean In since the last then. few years, I think he did again. Oh, probably. But he specifically mentioned in there that he was, like, pulled all the things that he couldn't do. And so he was apologizing dead. and, like, I'm sorry, whatever. <laughs> this is lame. Yeah, I don't know. So I saw Ozzy with Rob Zombie. Oh, Rob Mud Zombie's Vane probably and good. Soil. And that oh, was a really fun that show. that sounds good. We were, at, it was at Kobo. We were in the top level straight back. Which is way back. And you could feel the fire from the stage um, when Mudvayne was on. Because they had like 40 foot flames. It was sweet. Uh, yeah. And then Rob Zombie had some pretty cool stuff too. Ozzy came out of the middle of the floor on a sleigh. And then went over the whole pit. And then it landed on the stage. That was kind of cool. Uh, but I, like the song sounded great. But Ozzy is a wreck. This was 2002 or 2003, I think. So, yeah, it was a while ago. But Ozzy was a wreck. Well, yeah, I would imagine Oh, roll so. stats. I'll what? never forgive Rob Zombie for destroying Halloween. I love the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. I, I actually don't. I like Rob Zombie movies. You do like them or don't? I do, because oh, they're okay. so... I haven't seen the newer they're ones. They're so weird. Like, he's just so weird. He's I just saw the, weird. Devil's, I the Devil's Rejects. Yeah, I appreciate the first one how he weird he is. Like, yeah, like, I want to you know? see his newer ones. Like, so I saw the, the first one he did with Captain Spaulding. I didn't see the other two. Oh, we should I think watch that. Two yeah, I would love to. You'd have to find it. Because I don't think it's on any of our streaming stuff. No, don't we have it? You don't have that movie? No, I don't own that. I don't think I ever owned that. See, that's looking pretty good. That's a pretty good mm -hmm. start to some fire. Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah. I'm going to make it gold at the very end. Do it. I think. So, it good. is 10.07, though. Okay, well, let me finish with the, the bottom of these wings, and yep. then we can probably we'll get do. off here. We'll do. Um, I've been wanting to go to a concert for a while now. I saw Papa Roach. Got to meet them. Uh... That was really cool. I got a picture signed from them. Uh, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And then, uh, gosh, I've seen so many people though. Drowning pool, I've seen a couple times in person. Got to hang out with them after as well. There's a venue in Michigan called the Machine Shop. It's like a bar atmosphere. It's really small. 
Uh, it's probably like maximum attendance, like 300 people, if I, if I had to guess. And so usually after the show, because uh, they're open till 2 a.m., because they're technically a bar, uh, like the band will hang out and drink and whatever, you know, with you until basically until the door's shut. So it, it was really cool. But I saw them, the Xies, um, a few other people. Just love going to concerts. Billy Ray Cyrus, best concert ever. <laughs> oh. You're done. I mean, I did. I saw him with Martina McBride. It, that so for eight nine year old me, that was a fun concert. Like, I loved. Martina oh, McBride I mean, like time. if it's like your first concert. I mean, like my yeah. first concert was like Amy Grant. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like I was like Martina eight. McBride's better though. Yeah, I was eight, and I had, like, box seats, too, or something like that. Right. Like, it was a Christmas special, and I got, like, all dressed up for it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay, so Rollstat said, The whole point of Michael Myers is an unnamed evil. Rob Zombie turned him into an abused serial killer who just needs a hug. Screw that noise. He missed the point. Oh, no, I love it. I, I like the different take, personally. No, uh, because then it's scarier, because you're like, that could be my next-door neighbor, and like yeah. they might have a, you know, they so, might be the person who somebody's going after. That's so what's scary about stuff, is that it could happen to you, yeah, right? Yeah, no, no. So, uh, I mean, I'm, let's be real here. So, Halloween was never scary, in my opinion, as a kid, but Jason terrified the shit out of me. But I was never, I never thought Michael Myers was scary at all, actually. <laughs> I always thought he was lesser. I thought Jason was better. And then I thought Freddy was like on the same level, but different. So you couldn't compare it really. But yeah, th that was, that was me. Nine Inch Nails concert. That would be fun. Weird Al was surprisingly a great concert. Why? I feel oh, like that would I be a like blast. Of course that would be good. So I want to see Pink. I want to see Lady Gaga. Like, I want to see a lot of um, performers, you know, like where they do all the stuff. <laughs> I think that would be an awesome concert. I also, just once in my life, I would love to go to like a Backstreet Boys concert or something. Like, just once. I, and, like, it doesn't have to be Backstreet Boys. If NSYNC got together, I would love to do that. Or, like, I, I would settle, I guess, for a Justin Timberlake show. I mean, like, I was going to get you this cool D&D &D stuff, <laughs> but instead I'm getting you Backstreet Boys tickets. Yeah. you would, Wouldn't it be fun, though? You don't think that'd be fun? I mean, I feel like it's, like, stereotypical for, like, me to want to go. And I'm not, I wouldn't really be that into going. But, like, I'd go if you wanted to go. <laughs> O-Town. If it was O-Town, I'd be all over But, it. like, that's, <laughs> like, degrees. that I love it because it's, like, that'd be a stereotype that people would be, like, oh, yeah, she would do something like that. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Roll stats says John Carpenter is greater than Rob Zombie all day, every day, not even a question. I like George Romero. I, I used to love zombie flicks pre Walking Dead. Uh, zombie flicks were one of my favorite things to watch. Like old ones, new ones, it didn't matter. And then, like, I don't know what it was. I, I think it's just that everybody started claiming they loved zombie movies and stuff for so long. And it just didn't seem genuine. Like, when Walking Dead came out, I was all about it. And, like, within, what, three seasons? It just started to go downhill. If we want to yeah. talk about, like, good movies and, like, stuff like that, though, we should talk about, like, like classic good movies. Yeah, maybe. You know? Like, I feel like a lot of, like, the... Baby metal would be the sweet. The more yes. classic movies that I saw as a kid. We watched mm -hmm. a lot of, like, Tarantino movies yeah, scary. and like no it doesn't we're not just is are we only talking about scary movies no in fact i was just reading as you said that roll stats we're not talking about scary we're talking about the film john carpenter made a film something that elevated the genre 
Rob Zombie capitalized off it. Sure. I mean, I don't disagree. Uh, Mike Myers cannot be an unnamed evil. <laughs> he's, he's got a name. You're right. That's true. <laughs> what you're looking at says Nick Lachey is from Cincinnati, so he is all over ads here still. Oh, yep. Yep. We, uh, was that the circle that they were on? I think it was. We watched oh, my that. gosh. Yeah, we watched that. It was a that. great show. I love shows like that. I used to love watching, like, we Real loves, World. like, reality shows. I do. I do. Paradise Island. Yes. Cameron says, The Walking Dead gave us too much zombie. I don't know if it was that. So it lost me with the season where the governor, it ended with the governor leaving like a zombie with the blonde girl or something in like a room. I think that was the last full season I watched of The Walking Dead. It's actually, it's only like two seasons. We've only seen like two or three seasons. Right. But before it came out, when I heard it was coming out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is based on the comic book and this and that. Like I was, I, I was very excited to say the least. But I love zombie stuff. Um, or did. I've kind of toned that down. Walking Dead missed the point. Settling down made it boring and safe. I think they were trying to do something different that you didn't see already. Like, anytime you see like, a zombie movie, the it's literally conflict. just running for your life. That's it. Like, they were trying to touch on how would you struggle to, to form survive. a society? What type of society would people form? Like, who knows, right? Yeah, I think so. That was the point. But yeah, I'm with you. I, I think I'm good on this for tonight. <laughs> Full stats. Well. Thanks for pointing that out, Victor. The evil that possesses him is when you explain scary things, it takes away their power. The unknown is always more frightening than the known. Yeah. Bn Drake later Flynn. That's why. Kind that's of. That's why ghosts are scary. Because it's unknown. You don't know where they're from. Where they came But I know where they they're from. They're from your imagination. Done. Done. Part of the apocalypse draw. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Man, maybe I don't. Maybe I do the opposite. <laughs> I purposely tone it down. All right, guys. So we're going to go uh, probably watch an episode of Bly Manor and pass out. But uh, thanks for watching. And we'll be back tomorrow. See if uh, she can get the middle portion of the Chimera painted. I'm surprised she didn't paint the tail black. Tail black? Yeah, I don't know. It's a scorpion. It's a part. scorpion. I didn't get that far yet. Okay, no worries. Anyways, we will find out tomorrow what color she's gonna paint the tail. So come back if you gotta know as bad as I do. All right, guys, have a good one. Game on.